You ever get tired of the ongoing war between Guardians, Fallen, Hive, and those weird turtle guys? Then maybe it's time to lay down your hand cannons, your bows, and whatever this thing is, and pick up some brutal melee weapons. Or perhaps pick up a fire staff, or even raise the dead, and much, much more as you join a different war between the high heavens and the burning hells in the highly anticipated dark and grim open world action RPG, Diablo 4. Now to ensure the best possible console experience as you slay your way through millions of demons in search of god tier loot, you'll want to pick up the Xbox Series X Diablo 4 bundle from GameStop, which is a match made in hell. Utilize the fastest, most powerful Xbox ever as you lay waste through Sanctuary with 12 teraflops of raw graphic processing power. Immerse yourself in every brutal action pack second powered by a one terabyte custom SSD. With lightning fast load times, as you explore the expansive and highly detailed world, all powered by Xbox Velocity architecture. Grab some friends or join up with other adventurers who delve into the loot-filled dungeons, reclaim corrupted towns, and take down boss after boss in glorious, hyper-realistic 4K resolution. And to make the most of this epic bundle, add Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to play new games on day one from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda Softworks, and more. Plus, you can enjoy hundreds of Xbox games with friends on console, PC, and cloud. Fellas, if you're interested in this bundle, down below is a link where you can pick up the Xbox Series X Diablo 4 bundle at GameStop today. So here recently, over on Twitch, you guys challenged us to use Cerberus inside of PvP. Now, there were a lot of people saying that it was actually meta and don't get me wrong Cerberus popped off a few games but after bringing it inside of comp we definitely saw its limitations with that being said though this actually led us to want to do a deep dive on this auto rifle because quite frankly Cerberus may be the strangest weapon Bungie has ever made it is an auto rifle shotgun hybrid but Cerberus has quite the cult following that begs an interesting question what is so compelling about a weapon that has neither been in the meta nor been significantly updated since release despite finding some answers to that question i have one overarching conclusion service plus one is the perfect example for how not to make a gun in destiny and probably not for the reasons you may think let me explain first i want to talk about the background of service this is an exotic auto rifle that was introduced to destiny 2 as part of forsaken now it wasn't until shadow keep when we actually got the exotic catalyst but just starting from base Cerberus was a quirky one aesthetically though it really did fit into the theme of forsaken a slow firing auto rifle that shoots four bullets at a time referencing Cerberus the three-headed dog of Greek mythology and a guardian of Hades but its reputation is less evocative of its firing namesake than it is the plus one tanked onto its title and its barrels it aspires to be a terror but that feeling is undercut by a half-baked joke that ironically adds very little to the experience and maybe even detracts from it no no I'm coming in hot but trust me the heat is justified by Cerberus's performance. To begin, its stats are unimpressive. The only numbers above 50 are aim assist and recoil direction. And by the way, its recoil is not good. Its exotic trait, four-headed dog, is what defines the gun, shooting erratic bullets from all four gun barrels at the same time. Now, the catalyst focused firing provides an alt fire that does essentially the same thing, but with a tighter high damage spread. Now, the spread shot package trait reduces the projectile spread for both firing modes. There's a lot of attention being paid to the shot spread, and for good reason. Cerberus's plus one barrel always fires at the center of the spread, with the remaining three firing in a circle around it. The spread is erratic, and that the outer shots can seemingly fire at a random rotation around the central shot. But the spread angle is actually very consistent. Standing about five meters from a wall, hip firing without the catalyst appears to be about a 15 to 20 degree angle. Aiming out sights does reduce it, but not not by much. The bullet hole decals are so close to those from the hip fire that they overlap. Now, focus firing does tighten the spread significantly, closer to the 5 to 10 degree range, with aim down sights affecting a similar change. This visual comparison tells us where our shots are going, but what are they actually doing? Cerberus's base fire spread seems tuned for up close play, while focus fire offers more range. But the damage numbers undercut that with a completely different story. Starting in PvP, 
for reasons that will become clear, Base Fire does 16 damage per body and 25 damage per crit. Note that all four shots deal the same amount of damage, allowing a single shot to do quadruple if you land every shot in the spread, meaning up to 100 damage for a single auto rifle crit in the crucible. Theoretically, if you were to land this twice, yes, you're talking a 0.16 time to kill value. Meta, am I right? Well, clearly not, as the likelihood of actually landing all four shots on somebody's head before they melee or even shotgun you is improbably low. Think of this less like a souped up auto and more like a watered down shotgun. Focus firing halves the firing rate down to around 180 rounds per minute, but does bump the damage up to 23 per body and 28 damage per crit. More range, more damage. This sounds like a great alternative, right? Well, now things get weird. With Cerberus's base fire, there is no damage fall off under 10 meters. Over 10 meters, the damage actually increases at a rate that is consistent, repeatable, and measurable. At zero to nine meters, we get 16 damage per body and 25 damage per crit. From 10 to 14 meters, it's 17 damage per body and 27 damage per crit. At 15 to 19 meters, it's 18 per body and 28 damage per crit. And at 20 meters or further, it is 19 per body and 29 damage per crit. Now I know this isn't exactly new information. The cult of Cerberus has known this now for years, but by God, we have to acknowledge how strange it is to make such a close range weapon with an incentive to play from afar. At least focus firing will benefit, right? Actually, the alt fire has some of the worst damage fall off you could imagine for an auto rifle. The 15 19 meter range drops body damage to anywhere from 10 to 13 damage, all the way from 23. Past 20 meters, each shot does a measly 5 damage per body and 6 damage on crits. Now this fall off performance still holds true inside of PvE. At Carl, the base fire hits minus for 2,219 per body and 3,546 damage per crits within 10 meters. And the numbers actually go up after that, peaking at 2,664 per body and 4,257 per crit. On majors, that's actually 878 and 1,403 up close and 1,054 and 1,685 from afar. Focus firing's additional damage benefits are more noticeable here. Starting on minors, at a little over 5,100 per body and over 6,000 per crit, but dropping all the way down to around 1,022 and 1,237. Now majors, that's a max of 2,021 per body and 2,437 per crit, falling to 405 and 488. I know that's some number soup here, but here's the gist. The close range focus spread is stronger from afar and the long range focus spread is stronger up close. Now it's truly bizarre that the base fire offers an extra 20% damage per shot only when you enter combat ranges where it's extremely difficult to land those shots. The max DPS under 10 meters against majors is 33,792, which requires landing all shots in a spread on the target's crit spot. The added damage per shot is nowhere near enough to make up for the missed shots. Arguably, the benefit of a tighter spread would be that you can land those shots from further away, but Cerberus punishes this play by behaving even more like a shotgun with extreme damage fall off. Now, am I arguing that this gun should be a mid-range rapid fire shotgun that can land all shots on a target with bonus damage on top of that? I don't know, maybe. That sounds kinda nuts. But this is where the reality of Cerberus becomes clear. Every aspect of this weapon is actively working against another. So this is what I mean when I say that Cerberus is an example for what not to do when designing a weapon, particularly an exotic. In our Centrifuge Deep Dive, we applauded it for being an interesting exotic with fun hooks and internal loops that make it like a mini game unto itself. After that, it found its spot in the meta being the number one used weapon in Iron Banner and Control, but it didn't dominate. Every aspect of Centrifuge encourages players to move fast or consider the consequences for moving slowly. Revision Zero has three firing modes and a number of catalysts that improves its performance, allowing players to tailor its anti-barrier performance to their liking. Cerberus Plus One actually falls short on both ideas. Its perk simultaneously encourages modes of play that work against each other, and as a result, its flexibility doesn't offer any compelling utility. As an auto rifle, its range is abysmal. Even with anti-barrier auto rifles in Season 21, stunning a barrier champion on Grandmaster difficulty requires you to be within that dangerous 20 meter or less range, rewarding you with a painfully slow stun. As a shotgun, it doesn't even come close to our current suite of legendary frames in terms of raw damage. As an exotic, its perks are at war with each other. 
the inverse fall off is such an oddity and I do love it. Like I love how quirky and weird this weapon is, but it's working against itself. Almost to the point where I wonder, is this actually intentional? But considering how long this weapon's been in the game, I would assume so. Now, for those of you out there that love Cerberus, I'm not here to invalidate your love for this gun. The fact that something so far outside of the meta can have a cult following is a beautiful testament to Destiny's sandbox and community. It does have some uses where the intended fantasy of a spread shot auto rifle becomes clear. In PvP, that central shot offers some decent short to mid-range dueling capabilities by going for crits while the erratic spread might offer a bit of bonus body damage. It's great for cleaning up kills at close range. And in PvE, that 85,000 DPS against majors feels pretty good when you've got the backup of a fire team. But all of these uses are incredibly situational and can be outperformed by other weapons. To me, the result is a gun that has flashes of fun, but can result in just being underwhelming for you and perhaps even downright frustrating. Now those fun flashes may point the way to a brighter future for this gun. Bungie stated that they have plans to continue updating under and overperforming exotics. So the question is, what should they do with Cerberus plus one? Now I maintain the opinion that not every exotic weapon should be meta defining, but instead provide a unique style of play. The auto shotgun fantasy is a compelling idea. First, the inverse fall off is actually very interesting and that would feel much better on the focus firing mode, allowing both versions of the gun to excel in the roles. Second, the central barrel often gets lost in the mix of on-screen numbers, despite being the only stable shot in a spread. Increasing the central shot damage relative to the spread would give Cerberus some real potential as a mid-range precision weapon and make the additional shots feel like a true bonus, as opposed to the current feeling of punishment if you can't land every single one. And third, the spread angle reduction on its ADS is hardly noticeable. We don't need duality levels of compression, but anything would help. Shotguns dominated the crucible for years, and a kinetic ammo range shotgun would most likely be a terrible idea. But these disparate traits can be restructured into something cohesive. If Lord of Wolves can thrive as a shotgun with a dash of auto rifle, some people even consider it like a pulse rifle version of a shotgun, well why can't Cerberus plus one be the other way around? Halo Infinite moved from its infamous one shot kill shotgun legacy to the Bulldog, a weapon that is ultra lethal at point blank range, but retains solid performance at a distance that requires sustained fire and good aim. And honestly, the list of unfavorable comparisons is is endless, which just reinforces our conclusion. There is a fantasy at the core of Cerberus Plus One that is compelling, but the product is, and always has been, an underperforming exotic that undercuts itself at every corner. Whether or not Cerberus taught this lesson, it seems Bungie has learned that new weapons should be more tightly designed to support their fantasies. If you're out there maining this gun, God bless you. Keep having fun. I hope for your sake that this weapon does get some attention, and it could possibly happen. We've thought for years Bungie's given up on certain archetypes. And here recently, they announced that they're going to be revamping the archetype for Warden's Law. So fellas, all is not lost. In the meantime though, I'm completely content to say that Cerberus is what it is. And I'm glad, honestly, that there's nothing else quite like it. Well fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.